who they are. Let's bring in Larry Sabato to put some fine points on it. He's director of the University of Virginia Center for Politics. Let's go first, Larry, to the Senate, which I think is terribly interesting. The three races to watch are in Pennsylvania, I think Georgia, and Nevada. How do you handicap those going into the election a week from now? What we know about Georgia suggests that it will be a runoff in early December. You know, Georgia has that strange rule, they're one of a kind, where you have to get 50% plus one of the vote, and there's a libertarian on the ballot. So probably goes to a runoff, and we may be sitting waiting to determine uh, who controls the Senate until then. But I also think it's possible we'll know within a week of the election, because, of course, the balloting and counting and disputes will take at least that long. Uh, so I agree with you on Nevada. That's very close, probably a slight edge to the Republican. Uh, at least that's the way it appears today. Pennsylvania, so much contradictory information and polling. Uh, Fetterman, the Democrat, John Fetterman, has managed to maintain the slightest lead over uh, Mehmet Oz, Dr. Oz. Uh, so if, it's, uh, if it doesn't change, he might be able to pull it out, and Democrats will have flipped a Republican seat. But it's also possible Oz will have surpassed Fetterman by Election Day, and that will mean Democrats probably don't have much of a chance of winning a Republican seat. But if I can add one thing, Tyler, sure. there are five other seats uh, throughout the country that are not one-sided. They're relatively close. Uh, one side has led most of the time, and that enables us to suggest who will win. But I can't remember a midterm election without one, two, three major upsets, and that could determine the Senate because it is so close and competitive. What are those? Those just quickly tick them. I would. I'm guessing Wisconsin. I'm guessing Ohio would be in that list of other five, five others. You're correct on both of those. Uh, North Carolina would be in that list. Mm -hmm. uh, personally, I lean all of them to the Republicans, but the one that seems to be most competitive. Uh, is uh, North Carolina, followed by Ohio, uh, Wisconsin less so. And then on the Republican side, uh, Senator Mark Kelly from Arizona, who's led pretty consistently, doesn't lead by much. And the Republican candidate for governor there, Kerry so, Lake, has been leading most of the polls. So those are the wild cards. We don't know about those. But let's assume that Nevada goes the way you kind of suspect Laxalt. Um, Pennsylvania, let's say it goes uh, towards Fetterman. Then you've got a net gain of zero for either side. Who knows about these wild cards? But then it all comes down to Georgia, doesn't it? Yes, and, and because of Georgia's rules, we all, especially the candidates and the people in Georgia, have uh, another full month of misery, of hundreds <laughs> of millions of dollars of TV ads, you know, wild charges, negative charges of all sorts, and you know, eventually they may change that rule. It'd probably be wise. Mm -hmm. So, Larry, just to dig into this a little bit more, I realize I got a little bit of a nail biter here over the next week and potentially plus month, based on what you just laid out. Um, we know markets supposedly like gridlock. Is this is there a scenario, given the fact that it's so close, and especially when you look at the Senate and how many seats are potentially up for grabs, is there a scenario where this doesn't result in some form of gridlock? No, because remember, you got the House, and the odds are mm -hmm. pretty substantial that Republicans will take over the House. So that's automatic gridlock. You only need one House of Congress to be controlled by the party opposite to the White House, and then a president is pretty much reduced to vetoes and executive orders, you know, and threats of various kinds. Uh, and that's, uh, that is the probability. Now, if the Senate goes Republican, too, then Biden is really behind the eight ball, though he gains something for 2024, because presidents are often reelected if they have a devil figure in Congress, if they can run against Congress because the other party controls mm -hmm. it. Really quickly, Larry, what are the things that matter most to voters turning out in this election right now? Oh, by a mile, it's, it's inflation. Okay. There are good sides to the economy, but it's inflation, no question about it. A Dobbs decision overturning Roe v. Wade would be second. That's in the Democratic direction. But it's not nearly where inflation is in the list of voter concerns. Okay. Larry Sabato, thank you for joining us. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.